A Ferrari, a go-kart, and a bicycle have one thing in common. They are similar components to having ADHD. The ADHD brain is like having a Ferrari engine combined with a go-kart steering and bicycle brakes. And this vehicle is a unicorn. This happens because the brain has specialized messengers for specific tasks and there is a short supply in the concentration department. And as we develop and interact with our surroundings as children, we unconsciously realize that we need to keep up. So the brain compensates by speeding up some processes, which in fact do become faster, but the steering and braking mechanisms are not typically updated as well, resulting in faster but harder to manage thought processes. Other systems in our body do similar things. When the body needs more oxygen, the heart can either beat faster or harder, or both. Although physiologically different, our brains follow a similar concept. Think faster in an attempt to keep up, or think harder to get ahead. When one learns how to manage these two differences from a non-ADHD brain, this has the potential to turn into a superpower, or even a life cheat code. A favorite hobby of mine is running. It was considered a punishment growing up. If you screwed up in sports or misbehave in gym class, you had to take a lap. Unbeknownst to the much younger version of me, there was an unconscious process playing out in the background. My brain had caught up early and in fact got ahead academically at a much faster rate than socially. I seemed an enigma to my parents and teachers. I would get my schoolwork done in minutes if it was a subject I liked. If I did not like the subject, I never got it done. My teachers and parents decided having me skip third grade might help challenge me more and therefore improve my concentration and development and attention. <laughs> did it work? <laughs> no. In fact, it made it worse actually. I was academically and socially behind. It made me adapt in some ways that improved my problem solving ability but not my grades or behavior. It also made my imagination more vivid as the need to escape or dissociate from reality became more intense. I always tested high for IQ, but family and teachers were left scratching their heads when my report card as a freshman in high school was three A's and three D's. They threw up their hands eventually and decided that I must be unruly and have a type of shut up, sit down, you know, keep your hands to yourself type disease. So what do you do with somebody that gets the work done they want to get done and doesn't do the work they don't want to do? Incarceration! I spent a ton of time in detention or being grounded. This is the exact opposite of helpful for somebody who needs a lot of, you know, muscle movement and non-structured creative outlets. How does one learn to steer and brake a powerful turbo engine in a field of misunderstanding? Well, it takes understanding and support. Most people don't have that. This is understandable because even the experts to this day still don't really understand ADHD. Here's what I've learned. First, understand and embrace that your brain is different and you are fortunate. Second, realize that to get your unique brain to a place of peace, it's gonna take a lot of work. The good news is, you get a lot of benefit from this work. Third, identify the things that bring you meaning, fulfillment, and joy. For me, honestly, I accidentally figured out some of the basics and I'm still on the lookout for new and more efficient means of achieving an equilibrium, approaching peace and contentment. This has been called positive self-medicating. Fourth, identify the things that make your symptoms worse, negative self-medicating. These are usually isms of some kind. These isms are not the primary problem, they are a symptom, but can absolutely become a problem of their own. I was 41, still eight years away from a professional detection of ADHD. I had played pickup games of soccer most of my life and also rode mountain bikes, but those required schedules and gear and really couldn't be counted on regularly. But the one thing that always seemed to work, albeit temporarily, being outside. So just like some dogs are inside dogs and some are outside dogs, some need more exercise than others. Well, I need a lot of exercise and somehow I accidentally found ultra running. That's running you know, 50 and 100 mile race. That seemed to do the trick for me. The training for them kept me extremely active and the events themselves brought dopamine in droves. For many years, this provided a band-aid type fix, uh, but understanding my situation was still years away. And the amount of time and energy it was taking to keep this positive self-medicating going was proving unsustainable. Over the years, some various other methods kind of seemed to develop. One thing I found that tended to work for me to help settle the ADHD brain down was a combination of playing video games and listening to EDM. Who knew? Did you like the little EDM club uh, sun cue in the background there? Well, fast forward several years and also by dumb luck, I found out that a combination of listening to music with headphones while playing Xbox, even for just 15 minutes, provided the type of reset my system needed to achieve peace and contentment. This occupies enough of the background browsers my brain has open so that I can really focus on what my brain really wants to do, be creative. Hey, creative workaround. All right guys check it out I'm driving along and I saw two manhole covers perfectly overlap and tell me that is not BB-8 from Star Wars the key to step four is observation good news if you have ADHD you already have finely tuned observation powers turn them inward observe yourself 
Observe what you are doing when you seem to feel best. Observe if it is positive self-medicating. Write these things down. I don't know about you, but I have to write these things down so I remember. Even if it's a really good idea that I swear I'll never forget. Observe if it is positive self-medicating. All right, write these down so you remember. ADHD and all. It is often a combination of activities that helps you learn how to steer the Ferrari. Put the brakes on negative self-medication. People with ADHD are much more likely to develop drug and alcohol use disorders, and that makes recognizing the positive self-medicating behaviors much more difficult. The bicycle brakes are what they are, but, you know, they're still brakes. The engine and steering can be fine-tuned through observation, recognition, and action. When the engine and steering are in sync, the need for brakes is a lot less. I mean, if you are driving a Ferrari with impeccable handling, do you really want to ride the brakes? Enjoy the ride. It's incredible. You're fortunate to have such an engine. I mean, like Cameron said in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, actually, no, it wasn't Cameron, it was Ferris. Who said to Cameron? No, he said it to us. If you ever have a chance and have the means to have an automobile this nice, you really should.